In this video I'm going to show you how to take a silicone mold of this cobblestone road that we made in part one of this series. This is a platinum silicone rubber called Moldstar 30. First we have to make a mold box. Glue the cobblestone road onto a flat board with a smooth surface. Make sure it's a smooth sealed surface so the silicone won't stick to it. And give yourself some extra space around the edges. The cobblestone pad is an 11 inch by 11 inch square. I want an inch gap between the piece and the mold box, so I'm drawing a 13 by 13 inch square around the piece that I can align my mold box with. For the box walls, I'm using this scrap IKEA furniture wood that I found by the dumpster. This is perfect for mold boxes because it's thin and lightweight, and most importantly, it has a smooth finish. I cut four long rectangular pieces. Each piece is a few inches longer than the 13 inch lengths I just drew on the baseboard to create an overlap at the corners. Start at one corner and just line up the wall at the next corner. Make sure your walls are a couple inches taller than the piece. And make sure your angles are squared up at 90 degrees. I'm cheating here a bit with these 90 degree angle clamps, but you can use any block of wood as a guide. Tack everything with a glue gun. Just a bunch of little dots to hold everything in place. And then if everything looks good, give it a good gluing. Don't be shy with the glue sticks. Silicone will leak out if it finds the tiniest crack. Spending an extra dollar on glue sticks is totally worth it compared to a blowout. I'm not really worried about all of these little cracks on the inside. If the glue on the other side is solid, it's good to go. A cordless glue gun is a must-have for your studio. This one dribbles a bit, but it works with all of my DeWalt batteries. The silicone I'm using is Moldstar 30 by SmoothOn. It's a two-part A and B mixed equally by volume. Very easy to use, very durable, and great for resin casting. All of my molds for resin casting are either Moldstar 30 or Moldstar 15, which is a little bit softer and more flexible, so better for pieces with lots of details and undercuts. Step one is to stir both parts A and B well. Usually you'll feel a thick peanut butter layer on the bottom, especially if the buckets have been sitting for a while. You need to mix this thoroughly. I like to pull it up and scrape it on the sides and then mix it back in. The white part A is always worse than the blue part B, but there is some on the blue side, so make sure you get both parts. Try to slowly and methodically mix it without too much agitation. You don't want to mix it like this, where you're kind of whipping it, because it whips air into it and the last thing you want is air bubbles in your mold. You can see all the little air bubbles here. Using a mold release will help your piece peel out of the silicone after it's cured. It's not absolutely necessary with this piece as the wood is sealed and smooth and the piece is pretty well sealed from the glue and paint. The edges of the plywood would be my biggest concern because they're definitely porous, but they're all pretty much sealed with the glue. There are probably little nooks and crannies here that will stick a bit, but I don't see any major issues. But I will give everything a light spray just to make it pop out a little easier. Universal mold release is my favorite but it is straight up 100% nasty chemicals, so do this outside with a respirator and gloves. I'm going to pour this mold in two layers. The first layer is just going to come up to the top of the piece. I'll be putting these chopped up bits of recycled molds into the little moat around the piece. I'll let that cure for about 45 minutes, then pour a top layer. The little recycled bits like to float, but this way they'll be stuck in the bottom layer that's semi-cured. Whenever I'm done with a mold, I'll chop it up into medium and small size pieces to recycle them into new molds. It's a great way to save money because silicone is not cheap. It's also a great way to thicken up your mold. I like to use these plastic mix and measure containers for mixing the silicone. They have all these nice measurements on the side. I really like the ounces and pints and liters and milliliters, but for this one, I kind of eyeballed it and I'm just going to go with this one and two right here. And they're transparent, which makes it easy to see my arrows on the inside here and the silicone level on the outside. I always pour the blue first. I was aiming for this number one right here, but I'm a little bit closer to this one, so I'm going to switch to this number two here instead of my original. I pour the white on the back side of the container because it's easier to see the blue line rise on the front of the cup. Try to get as close to equal halves as possible, but if it's not exact, don't worry too much. This silicone is very forgiving. Thoroughly mix it, making sure to hit the sides and bottoms. Unmixed patches of silicone can ruin your mold. You have plenty of time to mix this. It says the pot life is 45 minutes. That's the amount of time you have before it starts to set up, so there's no need to rush. 
try not to whip air into the silicone, especially at this stage. I'm actually going to whip a bunch of air into it to show you a pouring technique that is specifically done to remove bubbles. Before I drop in any recycled bits, I'm going to put down a thin layer of the silicone to prevent this from happening. And then I'll sprinkle in a layer of the small bits. You may have seen this pouring technique where people pour this skinny little waterfall of silicone from way up high. The logic here is that if there are bubbles in the silicone, they'll stretch out and pop. You can get as OCD as you want going really high and really thin. It's a great technique if you're not degassing your silicone. Degassing is where you put your silicone in a vacuum chamber. This actually removes the air from your silicone with this little vacuum pump. I use this technique for almost all my molds because they're almost always more complex. But this mold is really as simple as it gets and the skinny waterfall technique will work just fine. Then I repeat this a second time with another layer of the recycled bits and then finish it off with the remainder of the silicone that's in the bucket. I let this first layer sit for about 45 minutes. That firms it up enough to lock all the little bits in place because they have a tendency to float and I don't want that. I want the top layer to be smooth and flat so I can level it when I pour the resin. Here's an example of the uneven surface you can get when they float or just when you have too much in the top layer. You can see how this would be problematic if you want it to lay flat and level. You need to make sure that your silicone pour is level too if you want your resin to be level. And this may sound like a bunch of unnecessary leveling, but if your pieces have flat bottoms or bases, getting level pours can save you time sanding or prevent a piece like this from having an uneven thickness on opposite sides. So after about 45 minutes, I'll top it off so there's at least a half inch thickness over the piece. One nice thing about this silicone is you can add to it any time and it will always bond to itself. I could come back tomorrow or next week and top it off some more if I wanted. Also, these videos take a crazy amount of time to make. A comment or like or share would go a long way to supporting my fragile enthusiasm. Moldstar 30 has a cure time of 6 hours. So if you're in a rush, you can start using it right away, but my advice is to always let it cure overnight. There's this thing rubbers do called creeping. Even after it hits the cure mark, it doesn't completely plateau. It's still alive and moving around a little bit up here. This is where it creeps. This is more of an issue with urethane rubbers, not so much an issue with platinum silicones, and definitely not an issue with this one-piece mold, but if you're doing finely tuned, detailed two-part molds, it might be something to consider. Pulling the cured silicone out of the plastic bucket is probably my favorite part of this. To remove the mold box, I start by sliding this long blade under the glue beads. Then give the board some light taps with the hammer and they all come off pretty easily. The silicone has no problem separating from the wood. And I can just flex the baseboard and pop the mold off. This wasn't something I planned, usually I have to get under it with my knife, but it just seemed logical at the time. Next, I'll cut off this little flap of silicone that seeped into the gap that was created by the glue. Try to avoid this gap. You only need a tiny bit of glue to lock your piece down unless your piece is hollow or has some random air pockets. Then the piece could potentially float up. I've had this happen before and it's a nightmare. You basically have to start over. So if that's the case, glue it down solid. Or better yet, fill the voids or air pockets with casting resin first. The silicone peels off the piece pretty easily, but there's always a little bit of that suction cup thing going on, so just go slow and methodical because you can easily tear it if you're impatient. You can see that the silicone picked up all the fake grass, which I expected to happen. I always call the first resin pour a junk pour because it will clean up all the bits of debris like the grass here. So in theory, the second pour should be clean but you can see that it really picked up all the nice texture of the cobblestone, and the important thing is it's super smooth. The last thing we're going to do is just clean up all these edges. I put the cobblestone back in the mold just for stability, and with a razor blade, I'm just slicing off a little edge of each corner. This will help it sit flat when I level it. The mold turned out to be about $30 worth of silicone. It's definitely thick, and I probably could have gone thinner to save some money, but I prefer to overbuild all of my molds. They just last longer and perform better. When I fill this with resin, it's a decent volume with pressure pushing out. What could happen if the walls are too thin is they could bow out and distort the casting. So I think spending an extra 5 or $10 in silicone is totally worth it. 
You can also easily remove the leftover resin from those cool measuring containers that I also linked in the description. You can wipe down your buckets with some isopropyl alcohol and they'll look brand new. In part 3 of this series, I'll show you how to pour a resin positive. If you'd like to check that out, click the link right here. Thanks for watching.